Hello world. This is Think T Media. We are disclosing Tigray genocide. It is not long ago, there is active genocide in Tigray northern Ethiopia now. People are dying of siege and forced starvation which is against the international law. More than half a million Tigrayans massacred and more than 5.1 million people displaced. More than 120,000 women and girls gang raped out of which more than 40,000 women intentionally made of AIDS positive by Amhara, Eritrea, Somalin, and Ethiopian troops only in two zones of Tigray. So many world powers have participated in this crime out of them, UAE, Turkey, Ukraine, Russia, China, the USA in the end times of Trump by supplying drones and armaments and Eritrea, Somalia etc. by sending deadly troops. In history, it is only Tigrayans in Ethiopia burn alive. And the genocides are not yet made liable of their crime. Our aim is to promote human rights and humanitarian activities, disclose and condemn crimes and criminal acts. Subscribe our channel and watch our videos for more information. News Headlines The Secret Why the Butcher A.B. Ahmed Ali is Eating Amhara Faino an informal militia shifter and gangster which contributed a great role to the Tigray genocide North Ethiopia. More than 4,000 arrested in Amhara as Ethiopia cracks down on militia. At least 19 journalists caught up in mass detentions after the butcher against moves Faino, its former ally in Tigray conflict. Eritrean troops shell Shararo town in Tigray and massacred civilians, UN. Eritrean troops shell Shararo town in Tigray, UN. By Reuters. Updated May 31st, 20 May 31st, 2022. Nairobi, Reuters. Eritrean forces shelled Shararo town in North Ethiopia over the weekend, according to internal UN documents and regional forces, in a rare bombardment after two months of relative peace in the Tigray conflict nation seen by Reuters cited information from humanitarian organizations in Shiraro saying at least 23 rounds were fired, some hitting a school housing displaced families. A 14-year-old girl was killed, at least 18 people were injured and 12 houses were damaged, one of the documents said. Late on Monday, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, the party that controls most of Tigray region, accused Eritrean forces of attacking its troops on Saturday and Sunday in Shiraro, about seven miles from the Eritrea-Ethiopia border. Eritrea has supported Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's federal forces in its war since late 2020 with the TDF. The TDF said its forces had killed four Eritrean commanders and more than 300 Eritrean soldiers in the weekend flare-up. Eritrean Information Minister Yemane Jebremeskel did not immediately respond to requests for comment, and Reuters was unable to independently verify those numbers or the attack. Tigray's communication network has been down for a year. As part of their desperate attempt to escalate the tension and drag us into more action, they sh shelled Shiraro in the 28th and 29th of May, TPLF spokesperson Gitachu Reader tweeted. Ethiopia's military spokesman Colonel Getneta Dane and government spokesman Lajes Chulu did not return messages seeking comment. Eritrean and Ethiopian troops keeped of by the heroes of TDF from most of Tigray in mid-2021 and the butcher A.B. Ahmed declared a unilateral ceasefire in March after his defeat by TDF. That allowed to the jock of entering aid to the artificial famine struck on Tigray and brought a lull in fighting in a conflict that has killed thousands of civilians and uprooted millions. The people of Tigray is paying unwanted scarification including genocide. However, earlier this year, Eritrean President Isaiah Safwerki told state media his troops would intervene again should Tigrayan forces attack his country or threaten Ethiopia's stability. Top Eritrean general, hundreds of troops killed by Ethiopian Tigray heroes after failed offensive spokesman. Ethiopia's Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, has claimed that it has killed inside Tigray region a senior Eritrean army general and hundreds of his soldiers Tigray after launching a failed offensive that the rebel group claims to have been influenced by the federal government in Addis Ababa.
May 30th, 2022. Juba, Ethiopia's Tigray People's Liberation Front, TPLF, has claimed that it has killed, inside Tigray region, a senior Eritrean army general and hundreds of his soldiers after launching a failed offensive that the rebel group claims to have been influenced by the federal government in Addis Ababa. Itachu Reader, the TPLF spokesman, said the alleged offensive was carried out by two Eritrean army divisions on 24 May and was defeated after a successful counteroffensive by Tigray rebels claiming a brigade commander and hundreds of soldiers were killed in the offensive. An offensive launched by Eritrea's 57th and 21st Divisions on 24 May was thwarted and the units deployed by the Isaias regime decimated after a successful counteroffensive by our forces around Adiawala, Tigray, Gitachu said. A brigade commander, three battalion commanders and more than 300 soldiers were killed and wounded. Many weapons and material was also captured, the top rebel mouthpiece added on Twitter. The Tigray hero spokesman said the Eritrean troops have been shelling several positions belonging to the Ethiopian rebel group inside Tigray region as part of their desperate attempt to escalate the tension and drag us into more action. While vowing not to allow the government in Addis Ababa not to prolong the suffering of the Ethiopian people, Gitachu urged the international community to reign and put pressure on the government to stop attempts to drag the region into a conflict. It is clear that the regime will stop at nothing to drag the region into an interminable conflict and sabotage in real or perceived effort at peace, he said, it behoves the international community to exert pressure on the regime to reverse course while reiterating our unwillingness to let the regime prolong the suffering of our people, he added. The Secret Why the Butcher A.B. Ahmed Ali is Eating Amhara Faino An informal militia shifter and gangster which contributed a great role to the current crisis in Ethiopia. More than 4,000 arrested in Amhara as Ethiopia cracks down on militia. At least 19 journalists caught up in mass detentions after the butcher against moves Faino, its former ally in Tigray conflict. Ethiopia has launched a sweeping crackdown against an influential armed militia in its Amhara region that has led to the arrest of more than 4,000 people, including journalists, activists, and a former general. The militia group, known as the Faino, played a key role on Tigray genocide and ethnic cleansing alongside the federal military, Eritrean invading army and many other invaders of Tigray which is fighting an 18-month-long Tigray genocide. Since then, the TPLF has retreated to its northern home region of Tigray, and the government has made attempts to disarm and demobilize the Faino militia, leading to a series of clashes with regional security forces. Faino of Amhara and Kiro of Oromo are the informal shifter that destroyed the country's democracy, economy and peace. Nu, no, the butcher but Ahmed is eating Faino as he did his own military chief army leaders and his elite Amhara leaders two years ago. Remember Dr. Ambushu and his staff. An Amhara state security official announced the arrests last week, telling local media that 200 paramilitaries had been detained on suspicion of carrying out killings and engaging in other illegal activities. In a statement, the federal government said it was taking a wide range of measures in the Amhara region against groups involved in the illegal arms trade, looting and destroying property of individuals, killings, and creating conflict among the public. At least 19 journalists have been picked up in the mass arrests, according to the state-appointed Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, EHRC. On Saturday, Daniel Bekele, head of the EHRC, described the arrests of the journalists as a new low. Ethiopia's media law clearly prohibits pretrial detention for any alleged offense committed through media, and all detained media personnel should be released, he said. Brigadier General Tefra Mamo, who commanded the Amhara region's security forces until February, is among those detained.
He is known for his spy to Eritrea and assassinating Dr. Ambushu Mikon in collaboration with the butcher A.B. Ahmed. His wife is also Eritrean spy sent to Ethiopia to commit crimes and facilitate Tigray genocide. He was arrested shortly after giving a media interview criticizing the ruling Prosperity Party of Prime Minister A.B. Ahmed and its handling of the conflict with the TPLF. A.B. Ahmed assassinated Dr. Ambushumi Konan and his staff for attempting peaceful negotiation with Tikte. A.B. either assassinate or imprison any who attempted to make peaceful negotiation with Tigray. The case of Dishtagina is a prominent example. The policies of Oromo and Amhara driving dictatorial government is the the politics of bandits. They sold the sovereignty of the nation. nation. They impoverish it. Tefera appeared at the Supreme Court of the Amhara region on 20 May, accused of trying to dismantle the constitution. He was remanded in custody for 10 days. The conflict in northern Ethiopia broke out in November 2020 and has heightened ethno-nationalist sentiment among the Amhara, Ethiopia's disintegrated and dismantled ethnic group. Many Amhara resent the government's failure to prevent the TPLF occupation of parts of their region, which resulted in widespread damage to infrastructure, but the fact is the Amhara wanted federal power to control the federal system and assassinate A.B. Ahmed Ali then attain power. AB recognized what the Amhara are thinking to do and removed some of their leaders. One of them is the illiterate Manyoans Bua Yalu who pretended that the Oromo are snows and the Amhara are driving the central government before he is kicked up by AB. The secret why the butcher AB Ahmed Ali is eating Amhara Faino. An informal militia shifter and gangster which contributed a great role to the current crisis in Ethiopia is conflict of interest started on the partition of Tigrayan looted property and the power struggle between Amhara shifter and Oromo Shura gangsters. All parties have been accused of atrocities, including Faino militia members, who moved to occupy the western part of the Tigray region when the conflict began and committing genocide and ethnic cleansing on the people of Tigray. A recent report by Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International accused Amhara forces of launching a systematic campaign of ethnic cleansing against the area's Tigrayan population and Tigray indigenous land. The Faino began as a loosely organized Amhara nationalist movement active in the 2016-2018 protests that led to the downfall of Ethiopia's former peaceful government by committing genocide on the innocent people of Tigray. It subsequently evolved into an armed militia group before the current conflict further swelled its ranks. A Faino fighter from the historic town of Lalibola, who fought against the TPLF last year, told The Guardian that he and other militia members were currently in hiding because they feared arrest. If we sleep in the town, the government will come and imprison us, so we spend the nights in the countryside, he said. Many of my friends have already been imprisoned. The government is acting too much like a dictator because they want to control the Amhara region of 30 million people and make us poor. The federal government declared a humanitarian truce with the TPLF on the 24th of March and has ceased restrictions on aid to the Tigray region, where 5.2 million people need humanitarian assistance. Reports that the government could be preparing to negotiate with the TPLF have provoked criticism by Amhara activists. A previous amnesty that saw the release of several TPLF figures in December was also deeply unpopular although thousands are now in prison. Zola Mojis, a member of the Amhara Regional Parliament, said the government now sees the Faino militia as a threat to its authority, despite its reliance on the group when fighting the TPLF last year. Now they are trying to control this informal armed group, but we don't know what the consequences will be, Zola said. The government could succeed or these militia could go underground. If that happens, it will be very difficult to fight them. Ethiopia's civil war engulfs civilians in crisis. Local Ethiopians, mainly Tigrayans, see peril as humanitarian crisis worsens. Eloise Binder
Doctors caring for cancer patients at the main hospital in Tigray say they have only two chemotherapy drugs left in date and are treating terminally ill people with expired medication and paracetamol. Eighteen months of war have left the sickest in society suffering agonizing deaths, they say. For the first time in 11 months, doctors at the Ada Referral Hospital in Mikkel took receipt of an oral chemotherapy drug earlier this month as part of an airlift by the International Committee of the Red Cross, ICRC. Until then, they had had only one, doxorubicin, still in date. But, though there are some signs that the de facto blockade on the northern Ethiopian region could be easing, oncologists say they are still in dire straits and using expired drugs to try to eke out supplies. The aider as a whole has just 16% of the drugs it needs, a doctor told The Guardian. Our pharmaceutical stock status is 16.3% at the moment. The situation is dire. We have finished almost everything, he wrote in a text message, speaking on condition of anonymity. An oncologist, who also requested his name not be published, said that due to the scarcity of medication the hospital had stopped being able to offer any meaningful treatment to most cancer patients. Most of our patients are returning back home, he said. He and his colleagues had become used to sending patients home in the knowledge that they would almost certainly die there, he said. That's really hard. Almost all of them, when we tell them that, they will cry in front of us. He added, we cannot even give them a strong analgesic for pain and other palliative, palliative treatments. We don't have strong analgesics like morphine. What we have is mild and moderate analgesics like tramadol and paracetamol. So, the patients are also suffering from pain. The war between forces loyal to Abiy Ahmed's government in Addis Ababa and the Tigrayan regional authorities appears to have edged tentatively into a new phase after a cessation of hostilities was agreed in March. A trickle of emergency food aid and medical supplies has reached Tigray, which had been suffering under what the UN termed a de facto blockade since last July. And there are signs that this is becoming a steadier flow. The World Food Programme said that 163 trucks, the biggest delivery of the year, had reached Mikkel last week, and that due to the return of 100 trucks, which had been kept in Tigray since July, it would continue to scale up deliveries. This is little comfort to the patients in need of chemotherapy who, with the right drugs, could perhaps be saved, but now face being sent home to die. One doctor, who had recently been on the cancer ward, said people were struggling to understand why they were still being refused treatment. The nurses are very frustrated because patients are repeatedly asking them, where are our cancer drugs, because they hear drugs are coming in. It's heartbreaking for the nurses and for the physicians working there. I saw one oncologist crying while giving an interview for the local media. They are in a dire situation, he said. In a statement, a group of oncologists at the Ader wrote, The existing situation of cancer care in Ader Comprehensive Specialized Hospital is so bad that it is almost non-existent, and those who have no involvement in the war are paying a huge cost. The war has decimated the healthcare system in Tigray, home to more than 7 million people. But the parlous state of the Ader's cancer care, care is particularly striking given that, five years ago, doctors at the hospital had drawn up an ambitious plan to bring its oncology services into the 21st century. A comprehensive cancer care unit, housed in a new six-story building, was to be built, and doctors were to receive specialist training in Ethiopia and abroad. When war started in November 2020, it put a stop to the plans. Now doctors are urging cancer societies around the world, such as the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the Association of Cancer Physicians in the UK, to help them. We call to the medical community to be a voice for these voiceless patients, said the second doctor. In their statement, the oncologists called on the Federal Health Ministry to immediately and rigorously support cancer care by sending essential medical supplies. They also implored the international community cancer care advocates and the UN to join hands in averting this man-made catastrophe. We beseech particularly the global oncology associations to raise their voices to help remove barriers of cancer care.
The cancer patients of Tigray urgently require life-saving medical supplies. The World Health Organization said it had not supplied chemotherapy drugs to Tigray as none of its partners were directly involved in cancer care, and cancer medicines were controlled substances that could not be procured by its partners. Cancer medication would only come to Tigray via the Ethiopian Health Ministry, or under special grants, it said. The ICRC said that the delivery of imatinib, a chemotherapy drug mainly used to treat people with a form of leukemia, on May 11, had been at the request and on behalf of the Ministry of Health. The airlift, the 55th ICRC flight to reach Tigray this year, also contained insulin, hemodialysis, oxytocin, tetanus vaccine, gloves and surgical equipment, it added. The Ethiopian government led by the butcher Abi Ahmed Ali has always denied placing Tigray under a de facto blockade, saying the failure of aid delivery has been due to fighting by Tigrayan forces, lie is the identification of Abi Ahmed Ali. It also accuses the Tigray People's Liberation Front of having attacked and looted hospitals, this is the other lie. Abi Ahmed has even lied of his corrupted PhD. While he is grade 6, he holds PhD certification. Abi Ahmed is the most deceptive and liar man the world has ever seen. The international community has to interfere the Chrisai in Ethiopia and make the butcher Abi Ahmed liable of his genocide.